In some cases, there may be a need to separate some of the faces from the geometry to assign different boundary conditions. For example, here you can see mesh, which has only one boundary, and so we cannot assign different boundary conditions to inlet and outlet from the catalytic converter. So, we have to create a mesh in which inlet and outlet are separate faces. Let's display the geometry and hide the mesh, and we will separate two faces of the geometry by creating groups. First, press Ctrl on your keyboard and left-click on your mouse on the inlet face. Then, go to Geometry Faces and click Create New Face Group, and next click Create Group from 3D Selection. As you can see, the selected face was moved to a new group, while all the other faces remain in the default group. So, press Escape on your keyboard, rotate the geometry and separate the outlet face from the geometry. Again, click Create New Face Group, and then Create Group from 3D Selection. We can also rename these groups by double-clicking on their default names. For example, we can name this one Outlet, and this one Inlet. With these settings, we can create a mesh which has three separate boundaries. So, now we need to go to the Hex Meshing panel and simply click the Mesh button. Once the mesh is created, we can hide the geometry and display the mesh. As you can see, there are three different mesh boundaries. And after selecting a solver in the Setup panel, we can also see these boundaries in the Boundary Conditions panel. For example, here are Inlet and Outlet, and all the other faces are grouped under the Catalytic Converter boundary. Another application of grouping faces is that we can use groups to specify whether we want to create mesh boundary layer adjacent to the surfaces which are in a group. If we go to the Hex Meshing panel and switch to the Geometry tab, we can expand the list of options for the Catalytic Converter geometry and select the Create Mesh Boundary Layers button. Here, we can specify whether we want to create mesh boundary layer on the faces in the default group, on the inlet face, or on the outlet face. Creating groups works a little bit different if we use an STL geometry, and in this case more options are available. Just for demonstration purposes, we can load the wing geometry which has an STL format. If we click Open and hide the mesh, we can see that this is a single geometry, and it is impossible to separate particular faces from it. In order to divide the geometry into faces, we should expand the list of options for the wing geometry, and then use the Split tool. If we click Split, the geometry will be divided into faces. As you can see, now every single face can be selected and moved to a separate group. Using this divided geometry, we can repeat the grouping operation. So, press Ctrl on our keyboard and we will separate, for example, this one face from the geometry. After selecting the face, we should click Geometry Faces, next Create New Face Group, and then Create Group from 3D Selection. What we can also do here is that we can extract the group as a separate geometry. If we click the Extract button, the face which belongs to the group will be removed from the wing geometry and loaded as a separate geometry. The advantage of having a separate geometry is that now we can also specify different mesh refinement levels for different faces of the wing geometry. So, if we go to the Hex Meshing panel and select the Mesh Geometry button for the original wing geometry, we can set refinement level to be 1. However, we can also set another refinement level, for example 2, for the geometry which was created by extracting the group.